Hello everybody and welcome back to some exciting Bionicle news. Now it feels like just a few days ago I made the news video about reviving Bionicle and I was like we're not gonna get any more Bionicle news for a long time because it's cancelled and then today this happens. So I guess the first thing to say is we don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt if this is like real or legitimate. It might very well be fake but I don't think it is. Um, a Bionicle 2015 story bible style guide, etc, etc, whatever you want to call it, has gotten leaked via a FTP server for a Russian marketing slash communications agency. Someone took the story bible off the server and translated it back into English and posted it on the Bionicle subreddit. It's your call whether or not you want to believe its legitimacy, but flipping through it, it, you know, pretty much lines up. There's nothing outlandish really in it except for one page, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, for the safety of the channel, just in case, you know, anything to do with copyright or whatnot, I'm not going to include any pictures of the story bible in this video. Uh, if you want to find it, you know, go check it out for yourself and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. It's quite an interesting read. The page that merits me making this video, the page that's actually interesting for discussion's sake, is a page about the mask of time. The page is titled... Uh, time changes everything and it's very interesting so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read it to you it says we want to draw from the original initial plot of Bionicle but not be limited by it we're going to achieve this with the following trick the original story involved the mask of time which granted its owner the ability to alter the flow of time but the mask of time was a half mask Here's the trick. The second half of the Mask of Time is located on the island of Okoto. The six protectors use it to summon the Toa. We believe it will be enough to link the two plot lines and awaken the imagination of the longtime fans. With this, we encourage them to come up with their own explanation. What exactly happened is not important to us, but we need this trick because it allows us to tell the story of Bionicle anew. Thus we've come to the beginning, but the circumstances have changed. The characters are the same, but the island and the plot have changed. This allows us to achieve three goals. Number one, we've come up with a new beginning, not burdened by what happened in the past. Number two, using the mask known to longtime fans, we support their interest, encouraging them to fill in the blanks and come up with the story that links the two worlds of Bionicle. And three, we can use the treasure trove of previously created content, but do it dynamically. We can use it as a source of inspiration without getting bogged down in the details. Now that is a translation from like Russian back to English, so there's no point in getting hung up on like the exact words used. But the spirit of the message is clear. It's that they were going to link the two generations, you know, make Bionicle G1 and G2 have continuity, but not do it in a direct way. It would never be addressed in the main story, but all of the pieces would be given to the fans in order to have them extrapolate what the deal is with the Mask of Time, what the deal is with the Temple of Time, and how everything fits together. I hope you all will forgive me, those longtime viewers of ours, for gloating for just a second. <laughs> because if you remember, when G2 first came out, that's literally what we said they were doing. There was a lot of controversy back in early 2015 about whether G2 was a soft reboot or not. You know, whether whether it was a super hard reboot, whether they were going to tie it all back into G1 in some way. What we came to, because there was a lot of controversy on both sides, different people said different things. The middle ground that we at TTV kind of agreed with was they're never going to actually do it explicitly in story. They were never going to have G2 end with like a portal opening and the Toa return and you see the island of Mata Nui and you see like the Glatorian, you know, on Spherus Magna or whatever. That was just never going to happen, number one, because G1 didn't end in a way to support such a thing happening and have it make any sense. But number two, they just weren't going to do that because it'd be confusing. But they were going to heavily imply it. 
They were going to put all the pieces in, in the story to make the fans be like, okay, this had to be what happened. This has to be what Lego's going for here. Having the upper half of the Mask of Time be on Okoto and the lower half somewhere that no Okotans had ever you know, heard of. They had no info about it, no pictures whatsoever. Almost like it was in another time or another dimension. Hmm. And you know, in the... In the first graphic novel, there was a line about how the Temple of Time connects to different worlds, you know, different times. They, they pretty much told you without telling you, but still, there's always been, you know, resistance from some parts of the community. Either because they didn't want G2 to be connected to G1 because they felt, you know, that G2 isn't as good, or the flip side, people wanted G2 to be a standalone thing and not have it connect back to G1 because people were sick of all the baggage and all the deep lore and all the deep continuity and they wanted G2 to be fresh. If this spell guy is real, and if it's to be believed, then it finally confirms the almost four year old theory that Lego was doing it without actually committing to it. Which I'm totally cool with, by the way. You might think, you know, this is me saying this is a bad thing. I actually think everything explained in the style guide is quite intelligent. Um, I'm actually not offended by it at all. Uh, I think that them wanting to use old Bionicle stuff, but do it dynamically without feeling derivative, I actually think that's totally cool. If the G2 had actually played itself out, they could have really run with that whole idea of kind of taking old concepts and repurposing them because of the altered timeline, you know, messing with events or whatever. Um, different takes on old ideas. I would have loved to see more of that, you know? Like, we, we did not want G1 redone again, and we also didn't want it to stray too far from the source material. We wanted the basic themes of Bionicle, maybe even some of the old characters or villains or, you know, objects or even storytelling beats, but done in a new way, a way that felt fresh. What we ended up getting wasn't really that. It was basically a hollow shell uh, that felt very superficial, but it's clear that LEGO did have ambitions to do it properly the first time. Whatever reason, you know, we've discussed it ad nauseum. It got lost in translation, probably because of budget, probably because it's construction, etc., etc. But they clearly did have an idea for how they were going to do G2 and have it actually make the fans happy. And, um, you know, would I have liked to have it confirmed in story? Maybe. Uh, if the theme had progressed to its natural conclusion. But, I mean, everything in the style guide sounds good to me. I'm just glad to finally have it confirmed, quote unquote, if this, you know, style guide, certain Bible, whatever, is actually to be believed, which we won't really know one way or the other. You pretty much just have to take it on faith. But, I mean, I read through the, the entire thing and nothing seems wrong with it. Pretty much everything seems like what I would expect from such a document. Uh, there's even a new piece of concept art that I've never seen before uh, showing the villager huts. It might have been in the art book, but I don't think so. Uh, it's located on page 29. Uh, if you want to see it for yourself, I'm not going to actually put it in the video, but that might be a piece of legitimacy to say, hey, this is actually real. I don't know. You be the judge for yourself. And I'm really curious to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. What do you think of this? Do you like Lego's plan to subtly imply a generational connection? Would you have preferred they committed to it in story? Would you have preferred they would have left the generations well enough alone and not had them connect to each other in any way? I know there's a lot of different ideas and opinions out there, so I'm really curious to know what you all think. Um, not like, you know, we haven't had this conversation before, it's just interesting with this new context. Uh, if any opinions have changed over the years. That'll be all for today. Thank you all for listening to some exciting Bionicle news. Hope I can bring you more one day. I'm Meso, and I'll see you all next time.